east coast of Jutland. Beautiful scenery. So, four matches complete, just one more to come. And it is the women's singles, the third ranked women's singles, and it's Aya Okori, another left hander for Japan, up against Esther Morumi, three Wadoyo for Indonesia. So, as far as these two players are concerned, Aya Okori has won six titles, having been in ten finals uh, for the 16 year old. Well, only one match in senior badminton. I do beg your pardon, two, won one and lost one. So here the left-handed Aya Okori. And the 16 year old teenager from Indonesia, Esther Norumi 3 Wadoyo. Now I've just checked the stats, and in fact, I do apologize because our graphics weren't quite right there because she's played two matches in senior badminton and lost them both. One in the Sudaman Cup and one on Saturday here in Aarhus. But this will be the first meeting, obviously, between these two players, because the only match that Wadoyo played in the Sudaman Cup Welcome. was against Canada. So black and red. Red is your choice, and you're black. You've won the toss. Receive. Thank you. Oh, that's become a trend, hasn't it? Win the toss, choose to receive. Why on earth would you do that? Have you no confidence in your serve? And you've got to have a preferred end. As I was saying earlier, even with minimal drift. So, for instance, on court number two, I can tell you that just in front of me, uh, there are lights where the press sit, so that could be distracting, whereas the other end of the court, there's no lights. Ayo Hori is 25 years of age, in fact she turned 25 the week before these Cuba Cup started. Born in Aizawakamatsu in Fukushima Prefecture on the east coast of Hongshu. Currently 20 on the world ranking, has been as high as 13, and this is her second Uber Cup campaign. So to the Indonesian, no ranking because prior to this tour, she hadn't played any senior badminton. She only turned 16. Uh, very recently, that was on the 26th of August. Philip Young Chi from America, our umpire for this one, and service judge Rajiv from India. Here's a fun fact, this young lady was only age 12 when the last Uber Cup happened in Bangkok in 2018.
Kaya Ohori played in Kunshan in 2016, played one group match at third women's singles against Australia. She won that one, but then wasn't part of the squad for the last Uber Cup campaign in Bangkok in 2018. a medalist at World Junior Championships, two bronze and a silver. And the silver medal was in Bangkok in 2013 when she lost out to Akane Yamaguchi, who we saw in the first match of this tie. Cited. So we'll ask the instant review system to adjudicate for us. Here we go. And it was out. That's just wide. That's very well judged. She's the one that's making Wodoyo move from back to front, from side to side.
Played against Germany, didn't it? Three, six. Or do you? And lost to Sioux Fu and Nguyen in three games. Another pretty return of serve. Yeah, that's a beauty. What a lovely cross court net shot. Turn that racket head at the last moment. She did take it awfully late. I think she could have taken it a little bit earlier. It's wide. from Aya Ohori. And the line judge was right, was it? So she loses a challenge. with a six-point advantage. Maria Ohori, I'm looking very comfortable at the moment. Well taken. That's very well taken by the 16 year old Wadoyo. Yep, I know it was two flats and not deep enough from Ohori, but it was still very crisp.
No, oh, well judged. Just long. to get away with that or Doyle. There was a huge open court, so I was a little bit concerned about the slip from Wadoyo deep in her forehand corner. She's already got her right knee heavily strapped. And it was a wide open court and Ohori missed. Four straight points since the mid-game interval for the teenager from Indonesia. Four errors on the return of serve. Got to make your opponent play the shuttle. It's a very good rally from Wadoyo. Really, really moving her opponents back of the court, bringing her forward. Really dictating the pace. a pity because I can tell you if that had gone over Aya Ohori was nowhere near it would have been an outright winner Good control on the lifts from Ohori. What a drop shot. 
Racket head control for that is amazing. Look, she was off balance. The shuttle had gone behind her. He wasn't taking the shuttle in front of her and still managed to play the perfect drop shot. Oh, that's lovely. I love the way that she's looking to come forward now, Wadoyo. Drop shot, dresses the shuttle early, racket carriage is high, and then she's got the options. At that time, obviously choosing to play the little block, but she could have played the fast push. Just two points in it now. Six points adrift at the mid-game interval. Too much pressure on the shot from Ohori. That's gone wide. Two points away from the opening game for Japan. Landed in. This judgment from Wadoyo and its game point opportunities for Aya Ohori. game 21-14 in favour of Aya Ohori and Japan. 17 minutes for the opening game. In 21-14. Thank you. 
So the Japanese coach there, Choi Sung Bong. And quite a, a bit of advice for Aya Ohori. Well, certainly in the latter stages of that opening game, Wado York looked a lot more comfortable in fact, after the mid-game interval. Well, she was living with her opponent really point for point. Shot from Wodoyo. Technically very proficient. Look at that. Aesthetically very pleasing. It's a lovely looking shot. I was going to say another misjudgment, but she's challenging that one. She was right there. It was once again called in. Mm, yeah, in badminton terms, is a long way out. How is that for me? Good challenge. Just as well, we have the instant review system.
Ah, that was a delightful little hold and push from the backhand net to the left-hander. That one really got her opponent under pressure. Oh, what is the line? That's a fantastic smash. previous one she hit from that same position straight down the line that time going cross court that's great variation what oh you doesn't know which way to go which one to cover Intensity to the rally. Service over. Yeah, Four, can't run nine. anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well played by the 16 year old Wadoyo. Well, they both felt the pace of that rally. Yes, she's going to challenge that. That was called in. I'm convinced that was wide. Yeah, indeed it was. Good challenge again. Two challenges in this second game of Ohori. And she's been right both times. So she still has two challenges left. Speed of movement, terrific in that rally from Ohori. And she goes to the mid-game interval as she did in the opening game with a six-point advantage. Play. 
So 11-5 in the second game, having already won the first, Aya Ohori. So, what do you? Ah, yes. Well, there's no doubting what all you has got huge talent and huge potential. from the left-hander. Two shots back to the same place to the backhand nets of her opponent. One, two, exactly the same place. That means that Wadoyo had to change direction, went back to the base position and had to push off back to the net again. Yeah, there's another one to exactly the same place. The backhand net of the Indonesian. And this is a very handsome lead now for Aya Ohori. Ten point advantage. Yeah. Lovely angle on the return of serve. But the key there, taking it early at the net. Look, just drop the racket head at the last moment to play that spinning net shot. She's in full flow now, isn't she? Aya Ofori. Three points away from victory in this third women's singles and making it a five love whitewash by the defending champions, Japan, against the former champions, Indonesia. been dictatorial in this second game. 
So Hori and 13 match point opportunities. Only needed the one. 21 14, 21 7 in a match lasting just a little over 34 minutes. Uh, the coach from Japan, as always, just popping onto court to congratulate his player. 21 14, 21 7 in 34 minutes. And the victory for Japan complete. Five matches played, five matches won. And this is how they won the third women's singles. Here's the match point opportunity, the first of 13 had they been needed. But in the second game, Ohori really did uh, play exceptionally well. So this was the group decider in Group A. And I can tell you that France and Germany are still playing, uh, but France have definitely won that tie. So with the whitewash from Japan, which all started with Akane Yamaguchi, the former world number one, beating the former world junior champion, Tunju, in two straight games. All of our matches, in fact, in two straight games, as you can see. And then it was women's doubles and a scratch pairing of Matsumoto and Matsuyama, too good for Ramadanti and Sugiyato. Sayaka Takahashi was playing against the 19-year-old Wadani and came through that in 37 minutes. And then it was the second women's doubles, so a really, really interesting women's doubles combination as far as I can see. Fukushima and Higashino up against Mapa and Saika. That was nine and ten. And as we've just witnessed in the third women's singles, Ayo Ohori beating the 16-year-old Odoyo, 21-14, 21-7. In. It was actually 34 minutes for that one. So the group standings, the defending champions and number one seeds have won all three ties within the group. So they finished top of the group and they've won all three ties by the margin of five love. Indonesia have finished second, so they qualify for the quarterfinal knockout stage and France will finish above Germany. That match in progress, but France have already won three of the five matches within the tie. So France will finish above Germany. So that's it for the afternoon session. This evening here on court two, it's a Thomas Cup tie with Malaysia, the five times winners against Canada. Steve Pedersen will be your host for that. But in the meantime, from me, Jill Clark, bye for now.